In a world of single entities that don't do enough damage, high elf heroes stand out as some of the worst defenders, but let's see what Olaf the Moose can do against Kaiju, the submitter of this replay. Against Slanesh, where the handmaidens specific traits do make them a pretty decent pick. I mean, their arrows are magical, even if they don't do very much damage at all. They have a decent-ish fire rate. But yeah, magical fire damage means that they'll cut through the physical resistance of Slanesh units in particular. They also have anti-large and 64 melee defense, which is pretty solid and definitely can hit some units in melee. Only 360 weapon strength with really 35 bonus versus large is not like amazing as far as the weapon strength component is concerned does make them hit very hard against large targets but uh, i should say not hit very hard but hit consistently if not very hard <laughs> and yeah 70 armor again magic damage and melee as well so once again bypassing the physical resistance i guess is that due to the boon of isha it might be actually we do have a lariel backing them up here and uh, the rest of the build, we've got some Silver Helms, Dragon Princes, looks like uh, Spearmen, a couple of War Lions mixed in here, and some Lothurn Seaguard as a backbone. Looks pretty decent for Kaiju's Slanesh. He's got some Chaos Warriors of Slanesh pushing up this Toothgrass Hill here. He's got some Fiends of Slanesh and a Herald on foot uh, with a couple of Furies up in the sky. The Herald on foot's going to be very fast and won't be subjected to the anti-large bonus of uh, the handmaidens, but definitely can be caught by them with 62 feet speed. I mean, I say very fast. Technically infantry, <laughs> very fast for infantry. Like, very, very fast, but not fast enough to get away from the 84 speed of these handmaidens, and certainly, uh, although not anti-large, they do have the stats to at least hit her potentially and let's see what they're doing some damage do they maybe get some penetration on their arrows it looks like those arrows are actually hitting like three ish chaos warriors four chaos warriors shooting down the line like that so maybe something changed with handmaiden shot i don't remember them actually having penetration on their arrows in the past but up here on the high ground we see war lines there getting uh, enraged into some chaos warriors unfavorable situation for them damage and all that they are going to get pushed back as the Slanesh Chaos Warriors clash with the staunch line of spears for the High Elves. Obviously going to be very favorable engagement for the Chaos Warriors here, but Lariel charging in and the Handmaidens trying to work down you know, whatever the targets they can. They're going to charge in a little bit here as well. Take a little swipe there, a little lash of Slanesh trying to speed the engagement for the Dark Prince's forces here. Got us uh, a little fury summon as well. Just to add some more flying bodies in here to disrupt this backline, of course. Fury is counting as infantry size, won't be subjected to the spears of the Lothram Sea Guard. So they can charge on in and perform quite well in disrupting them, shutting them down. You can see a little beer charge here as well as the fiends start to get activated. It's definitely all, ha all hands aboard. Is that even a thing? All aboard. All, all hands on deck. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point, guys. Uh, you know what I mean. Just an all-in charge here. And bad time if you're a high elf spearman in particular in this engagement. The handmaidens are also kind of caught up in this. But they're performing okay. Again, if especially matched up on the fiends in melee combat. They're going to whip their spears out and perform quite well. Definitely have the damage to get through. And uh, basically zero armor of the fiends allows them... Get some pretty consistent hits. That bow fire also at close range as well. Getting a few hits. And one unit of fiends is almost down already. There's still two more to try and get through. And the high elves definitely are suffering under the assault of Slanesh here. But we see a little bit of healing. I say a little bit. Uh, Star of Avalorn going to be a pretty substantial amount of healing actually. And some of those dragon princes try and charge into that healing light to get some of it. It is hitting those lions of course. And the handmaiden... Uh, one of them at least, the other one here kind of pulling away, pulling up and around, getting ready to charge back in. The whole time, too, they're cycle charging, they're shooting arrows. You can see that one land right on that fiend's tail. And pretty good value all around. See Alariel also on horseback, has 60 plus melee defense with martial prowess. Uh, you can see even so Prophet Musk affecting that, but still over 60, even with that... Uh, Involved. Ooh, a nice uh, fascination here. Gonna do some devastating damage and also rampage those Lothran Seaguard. 
have been kind of shooting since the warriors were only engaging them on the flank. A lot of the models there were still free to shoot, but here this is a great engagement for the handmaiden. Get some spear support out in space. Try and take down another unit of fiends and get their demonic leadership so low that they can't sustain the fight. This one here is still sustaining in the center, but taking a couple of volleys of arrows there as Lothar and Seagar just desperately do whatever they can to shut down those powerhouse units of Slanesh. The fiends off the field, work will definitely be easier, but there are still a lot of these shielded chaos warriors as well, which, to be honest, the high elves don't really have a great answer for. Uh, Alariel didn't take any AoE damage spells. She can take banishment, which is an okay AoE damage spell, not the best by any means, but instead just opted for a full healer's kit here, only Earthblood and uh, Star of Avalorn, and we'll see how that plays out in the long term. A lot of targets for the healing besides the handmaidens, have already been killed, and the handmaidens themselves really haven't taken too much damage in the process. I think they're maybe at a little bit risk of getting army lost in the late game, perhaps. Right now, not really, uh, as balance of power is still well towards even, and all three of these single entities are quite healthy, which is definitely beneficial, but the rest of the army is going to be gone here pretty soon, which means it will be a single entity fight. We're going to start the fast forward already, as the handmaidens kind of pull away there, the spearmen brawling. Uh, what's left of them, at least, against the Chaos Warriors. You can see the one unit of fiends that also remains uh, moving in to finish Tattered Lothar and Seaguard. A handful of mobile units regroup for the High Elves and are able to catch the fiends out away from any support. Decent engagement for them, hopefully. I don't know, a lot of the Dragon Prince models seem like they didn't necessarily get in contact with their charge bonus active, but are doing some damage, certainly. The Lions are going to take off for the hills pretty soon, and yeah, it looks like... Dragon Princes likely will as well. Valario getting caught with some acquiescence here in the meantime, taking some big hits, but trying desperately to get away. A little bit of Earth Flood on those Handmaidens, again, to keep them as healed up as possible. They're really the only thing left at this point anyway. But uh, they choose to disengage here, go out again after the Fiends as much as possible when the Fiends don't have support. It's definitely the right call. A little shot in the back there as they try and pull away. Fiends actually do manage to uh, fell a model there as the Fiends pull back to their infantry support. So we'll kick the fast forward back on as uh, Kaiju here is going to take up somewhat of a defensive position here. And technically do it, uh, uh, yeah, technically in attacking rules, depending on the rule set you look at. It's all fine and dandy here as long as these multi model units are still attacking. And I think technically, I, I'm not sure, we'll have to look at the specifics. I don't know if a single entity missile units count as attacking necessarily with their missile attacks. But regardless, Handmaid is just about out of ammunition anyway, so that probably won't matter too much. I also don't know, this might have just been a quick battle, which means there's not necessarily tournament rules being applied. But um, yeah, all, all good right now, especially these Lothar and Seaguard are just using their bows to apply arrows to the faces of the Slanesh army here. Which, again, certainly satisfies the attacking rules. So we'll continue in the fast forward. It has the handmaidens kind of cycle charge a little bit here. We've got so much armored infantry to try and get through. And with not having armor piercing in melee and just generally poor weapon strength and splash damage, they are going to struggle to get through this. Definitely going to have to rely on leadership as much as possible uh, to that end. If they could somehow uh, get a hold of and break the, uh, the herald here, that would be a big big boon, but right now it looks like the Herald's about to break them with a big engagement on Alariel, actually just swiping her down. Will it be a finishing blow? She manages to get her healing light off just in time. The Star of Avalorn pops up and will manage to sustain her briefly until she moves out of the area, but at the very least helps to heal these handmaidens as they continue fighting. And the one handmaiden does manage to get in here and actually hit the Herald a bit. And Alariel with that Star of Avalorn actually does it continue healing her after she's out of the area of effect. That's interesting. Uh, she gets a substantial amount of healing actually from that and chooses to run back by those Lothar and Sea Guards. That was a pretty important get right there. Uh, the Handmaidens also in the meantime finished off the Fiends and are now uh, trying to get the Herald off the field. That would certainly be a big benefit. One uh, Handmaiden heal capped is going to rout though. Can't sustain the fight any longer in terms of leadership. We see a Locus of Grace here, big physical resistance and a melee defense buff, so that will help 
the Allure S herself kind of survive. A couple more arrows fly in, though, from the regrouped handmaiden. The other one's basically at her healing cap as well. And this is why, you know, maybe in hindsight being 2020, <laughs> uh, it would have been nice for Olaf maybe to have just banishments only, probably just some kind of damage spell. For Lariel in the late game for just such a situation as this, but obviously the healing has been quite effective and she's dedicated a lot of resources to it. So, keep the fast forward going as the Loris actually pops there. The Handmaidens, as I was waxing about spells and whatnot, Handmaiden manages to get a hold of her. The other one actually routes, but with the death of the Loris, that's going to be a pretty critical component. You see the balance power swings all the way back basically to even. Another critical component here, if I now so with leadership, I've talked about this in endless endless amounts of times, but it always bears reminding. Uh, yeah, under missile fire gives a unique leadership debuff of minus five. Note that artillery would actually give a separate leadership debuff. Not that that's applicable here, but it is giving that little bit of extra leadership uh, kind of push to get some of these units over the edge, especially with the death of their lord or lady, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> Slanesh, who cares? <laughs> Uh, yes. Anyway, we're going to continue fast-forwarding. There's not really much to see up close as these columns of Chaos Warriors chase. Finally, going to go chase down that Lothurn Sea Guard block that had been shooting them the whole time after they've used up all of their ammunition. And so, at this point, it's pretty much down to just single entities. They've got to run in here and start this engagement. And see, Ilariel is trying to at least create some kind of hammer and anvil situation where one of them is staying engaged and the other one can charge, take advantage of that charge bonus and mobility as much as possible. Uh, certainly could be frustrating to play against, but we'll see if the Chaos Warriors were able to hold out. Their leadership and armor and defense, will it be enough to carry? Yes, yes it will. Against the Elven uh, High Court here, the Ever Queen and her handmaidens Narrowly taking the loss there, and Kaiju manages to pull out the win. Chaos Warriors, just an absolute beast. Uh, Slanesh Chaos Warriors here, yeah, didn't really have a great answer to them outside of the War Lions, which were pretty well limited by the Fiends, ended up having to be used kind of in that mobility engagement. And as a result, yeah, the Chaos Warriors of Slanesh. I mean, Chaos Warriors in general, I think, maybe go a little bit underrated. Mid-tier infantry in general is just in a little bit of a weird place right now in a lot of engagements and, and matchups, but here they were able to prevail and cut down enough high elf, high elf infantry and then outlast their single entities in the late game. But full build from Olaf, I have to say, I like to see the handmaidens, and both of them got some really nice value back at the end of the day. Yeah, Lariel healing them was pretty important. I just think she didn't get quite enough healing value on the other units in this army. And that's, again, maybe why I would say you could option in, if you have the extra gold, um, the... Uh, banishment and it's it's definitely something that is good to have just as an option even for like a more demonic focused or you know something with a lot of like demonets and marauders and some and so forth uh, that vortex spell can still be effective in nuking you know one or two high value targets but yeah at the end of the day fiends well limited only one of them ends up paying for themselves but it's the chaos warriors that carry the day so fun stuff for sure uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. let's look at the, the value, actually, of the Handmaidens. Definitely interesting use case for them against Slanesh. Like, I definitely think that's a matchup where they can, perhaps, perform. But uh, let's see here. Where am I looking? High Elves. Yes, here we go. So, the Handmaidens themselves, and I don't know. They might have had one of their items or abilities there. I actually forgot to check. But uh, the Horn of Isha is one that you could maybe take if you want that extra little melee attack and reload skill bump. Not bad, especially if you have it only on one of them. But even without it, 950. So certainly we're able to get almost 2x their value there. Or more than 2x, I think, in one case, maybe. Uh, but yeah, good stuff, honestly, for the value for the Handmaidens. And then, again, for Lariel, can take Banishment. It's relatively expensive. You definitely have to find some things try and uh, you know justify that cost or or find the extra gold to pay for it but banishments it's decent enough pure ap damage seven damage per second good vortex uh solid enough uh, even though she doesn't have greater arcane conduit can definitely be an option or i guess you could also take shield of thorns if you're worried 
um, about units getting rushed down, you could cast this on a lower defense unit, uh, you know, on like a cavalry that's going to get caught by fiends in an unfavorable engagement. It's just uh, not as consistent and not as big of an area, obviously, as banishment. But uh, you guys will have to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Definitely an enjoyable one. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.